I know people are gonna get onto me for having a hood inside, but if they see the state of my hair right now, they won't judge. Hey, bro. <laughs> hey, I'm not. I'm not in a position to be exposing myself like that. It's crazy. Quarantine in full effect. All right, cool. Ready? Let's go. Three, two, one. Yes, people. Yes, people. What's going on? Good morning. Good afternoon. Good night. Whenever you're watching this, we are back. The Table Read Podcast, episode two. Um, I feel like some of you guys enjoyed the first one, I think. Um, so I said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So today, <laughs> today, we have the man, the myth, the legend, the goat, Mr. Anthony J. Abraham. Glad to be back. Glad to be What's back. What's going on, bro? Let's do this. You are officially our first guest. That's what it's looking like. Officially our first guest. How does it feel? Feels good, man. I'm excited to see where this podcast goes. I'm very excited. So am I. So, <laughs> so, so am I. How, how how long have we known each other? We have known each other. It's, it's not a long time. No, I would say about maybe... It's not that long. A like... year and a half, two years maybe? Two years? A year and a half? Two, yeah, 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 two years. Yeah, that's it, two years. Wait, let's get the, let's get, let's get the maths. It might be three. I think, did I meet you when I was 16 or 17? No, no, no. It wasn't because... three years because the first year I was at Identity... The first year I was at Identity, I never knew you. That's true. So it's case two, it's two, it's two, it's two. Yeah, it's two. It must be two years. So yeah, if you didn't know, me and Anthony yeah, met yeah. at a place called Identity Drama School. Um, it's a drama school, <laughs> as, as you can probably tell from the name of the school. Yeah, when I joined, I was in semi pro. He was in professional because he's the goat. I'm just saying, <laughs> he was in professional. <laughs> then a few people from my class got moved up, and I'll say this right. I remember when I was in Identity, I was what I started when I was 16, and the age difference. I was like, I was youngest in the class, but like, it went me at 16, then the next person was at 19 or 20. So I was the youngest by a mile. So I saw you when we, went, when we moved to your class, and I was like, there's no way in hell this guy's older than 16 or 17. I said, there's no way. He has to be my age or a tiny bit older. So I asked you how old you were, and if, if you, if you, were you 18 or 17? I was, same age you, I, was, I, was, I think I was 17. You were 17, but I think just about to turn 18. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> you can't call me the baby no more because my guy's the same age as me. To be honest, I don't know. Obviously, I don't know. I, but, mm, I don't know that much about you. I do, but I don't. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Like, okay, like, first question, why did you start acting? Because I don't know that. I actually Okay, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. I, I got into acting in, like, secondary school. Like, I'd say, like, a lot of people that get into acting now, like, secondary school, going, like, you do drama classes. And, yeah, I just enjoyed it a lot. And my drama teachers, you know, they'd always, like, you know, push me further because they saw that I was engaging with it, that I enjoyed it. And, you know, they asked me to do, like, school productions and that. Like, the first time they asked me, I was like, no, nope, no, nope, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but, you know, like, the next year came about, there was another school production going on. <clears throat> I think it was Beauty and the Beast. And uh, yeah, they asked me, oh yeah, do you want to audition for it? I was like, uh, I was like, okay, cool, 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 I'll do it, I'll do it. Then I auditioned, I got it, I was the beast, I was the beast. Mm. And mm, um, Beast. <laughs> yeah. The thing with me is, yeah, the school, the secondary school that I went to, it was a grammar school, right? So it's very, very academic, like everyone there wants to be doctors, lawyers, like engineers, like these types of jobs, right? And... I knew that I wanted to continue doing drama because I enjoyed it so much. But I always knew that for my A-levels I was going to do, because for A-levels I did maths, physics, computing, right? So like these these types of subjects. But I, I knew that I wanted to keep drama there because I just, I loved it so much. And then literally there was one one night that uh, I was with my mum downstairs. Like I think I was ironing or something. Or my mum called me downstairs and then we were watching the news, like which was weird because I, I never really watched the news. but identity came on the news because like they were doing really well at the time you know with John Boyega and Letitia Wright doing these big yeah. big things so they're on the news and um yeah my mum was like to me oh do you want to audition for it <laughs> and then I was like yeah yeah at first I was joking there I was joking I was like yeah, yeah I'll audition for it but then you know I went back to my room and I was really thinking about it and I was thinking yeah why not so then I auditioned for it I got in and yeah I, I loved it from there but the thing is yeah even when i was even for my like for most of my first year identity i didn't even want to 
<laughs> I didn't even want to be an actor in a way. It sounds weird going oh. to an acting school, but I didn't really want to. It was literally a thing of that. I just enjoyed it so much. For me, it was like football. I loved playing football. All I wanted to do was just play football with acting. I just wanted to act. I didn't really see like the career come out of it. Yeah, it was only until this very specific moment that I remember where I got an email. This was while I was still in secondary school, by, by the way. I got an email from um, the assistant of, um, of a very big agent. And uh, the agent wanted me to come in to do an agency read. Um, and it was like at this moment where I actually like clocked in my mind that, rah, like, I could actually be an actor like this could actually be like a real thing and <laughs> i was gassed i can't lie i was so gassed and i even like i took a day out of school um well a partial day out of school to go to this audition and everything but i was i was like so nervous like it really got to me and that was actually that was one of the worst auditions that i've ever done in my whole life like no joke that was one of the worst auditions i've ever done like, i crumbled like I crumbled wow. badly. You know, you know what's funny? My audition to get into I didn't see the school was the worst audition I've ever done to date as well. Is it? Even that was free, that was when I was sixteen. That was three years ago, and yeah. it was even now, three years later, it's still the worst audition I've ever done. But carry on, this is not about me. Yeah. So after after the audition, yeah, he told me that he wasn't gonna sign me, and yeah, honestly, I was heartbroken. I was heartbroken because I had um, my dad was literally waiting outside like in the car because oh. he just brought me from school and I had to go back to school as well. Oh. I had to go back to school to all, my, to all my friends that knew that I was going for this agency read as well. So I was proper, I was proper devastated, man. So yeah, I remember going, going back into the car. I looked at my dad and I just said, I didn't get signed. <laughs> and I felt like crying, honestly. I was, I was proper, I was proper devastated. But the thing is that moment, I would say that was the moment that I really knew that I wanted to be an actor. It was that moment there where I, w- I was rejected. And that was really the first rejection I'd ever like faced kind of in the acting world. But because I didn't have that opportunity to progress, because I didn't have that opportunity to, to like get to the, like these great acting heights because I didn't get signed. I knew that I wanted it that much more. I knew that that was the thing that was missing. I knew that that was the thing that I wanted to do. Mm. Like, kind of forever in a way so would you say would you say like you said like once you once you got turned down the first time and you felt like you know like i need another chance i need to make sure that i get i get by the opportunity and make sure i do it right the second time was it that i don't know what there's a word for that there's a word for that I'll just call it motivation would you call that motivation um would you say that's what kept you in acting because i found acting is one of those things like you can start at any age and you can end at any age. You can fall into it and you can fall out of it. Because it's a very, 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 like, I don't have a word for it, but it's, it's a tough job. It's a tough industry to be a part of acting, especially as a, a teenager. Any age, to be fair, but especially as a teenager when you're kind of in a crossroads, when things aren't really going your way. So was it that that kept you in, that kept you in acting, rather than just going, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I lost the first time. What's the point of trying again? Yeah, I would say that that rejection, it, it set my mind, it set my mind straight. Like, it was literally that moment that I knew that I wanted to do acting. That was really the moment where I said, yeah, I could see myself doing this as a career. And literally from that point, my mindset like switched that if I had another opportunity like that, I was I was not going to fail, basically. I was not going to fail. I was, I was going to get it. I was going to get it. And mm. so, yeah, that opportunity came back. I was like from from that two month like period, I was like proper like, reflecting working on myself that opportunity came again and i knew i'm gonna do my thing this time i'm gonna yeah. do my thing i'm gonna get signed and yeah with the grace of god it happened mm-hmm. so got signed who is anthony abraham that's what i want to know just who is anthony abraham this is just, uh, just who, are you? who am i i know but they might not know who just who, who are you bro <laughs> <laughs> okay i would i would call myself a an actor i'd call myself a student because I'm at university right now as well. Electronic engineering. Yeah, it's Pete. Long, it's long Pete. day, long day. Yeah, that's me, man. I'm an actor, I'm a student. Can I, can, can, can I help you? Yeah, go on. I would describe Anthony. I'm not even just saying this because you're my boy. I'm being like deadly serious. I would describe Anthony as the best actor that I know. No cap. 
no cap whatsoever. I promise you. I'm not going to get in. I'll be here for hours describing why you're the best actor that I know. But just remember, remember, I've spent, how long have we been in classes together? Two years, we said two years. Mm. So I've spent two years, two times a week, watching this guy act. And when Anthony trains, there's no half-heartedness. When he, every single time he does rehearsals or anything, it's full out. So I've been watching this guy twice a week, just, just work. He's the best actor that I know. Oh, all the other actors I know, you're great too. I'm not saying that you're rubbish. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying he's the best actor that I know. I might not be the best actor that he knows. I don't care. He's the best actor <laughs> that I know. Okay. But you mentioned, what was it? You mentioned el- engineering. What was it? Electronic engineering? Yeah, electronic engineering. Long. Very, very, very long. The one question I have for you, Anthony, is, is why? <laughs> nah, the thing is, yeah thing is with me like obviously i told you that the the secondary school i went to like very academic like i was just surrounded by people that or had that mindset like people that wanted to that loved maths they loved maths <laughs> and yeah i like i like just picked up in it like me i'm low-key like a bit of a geek in it i love my low-key yeah i actually <laughs> no, yeah i'll say i'm a geek i'm a geek i'm a geek i'm a geek and yeah so i love i love physics um i'm learning to love maths uh so i don't know i just knew that i would do something like technical in a way because i love technology so electronic engineering just like it was obvious to me at that time it was obvious to me but then um then acting came along and then it was like i'd say engineering was like here right on on the on the ascend and then drama was like here and it was like fluctuating <laughs> and then i did like a few few school productions and i was like Whoa. and then I, I signed to identity and i was like Whoa. and then like after after i got signed by the agency yeah game just over literally just keeps yeah, going game game just keeps going so what was that like what was that like because I, I know that like, everyone has like, the, the talk of their parents when they try and tell them like what they want to do with their with their career so that like, for your parents right Cause it's tough because you're, you're you're at uni you're at uni you're doing electronic engineering you're going to get your degree mm. but then you're also doing really really well with your career as an actor so is there ever a time when you have a conversation with them when you're kind of swaying with one or the other like how how does those conversations you sound like yeah so the conversation over the years has changed i would say it started off as acting as a hobby remember that it's mm. only a hobby <laughs> you're going to do your studies <laughs> You're going to go to university. You're going to get your degree. That's how it. That's how it started, and I accepted that at the time because, like, when I was sixteen years old, I wasn't thinking I'm going to be the biggest actor in the whole world. I was like, okay, fine. Like, yeah, I enjoy it, but I'm still doing the engineering thing. And then, as I slowly got more into the industry, more exposed, um, and my parents saw that they they were actually like, ex- like accepting of it in the way. Like they saw my passion for it. And yeah, I love them for that because they really like did like support me in everything that I was doing, all of the productions that I've done, they came and watched and everything. But it was always a thing of like, yeah, yeah, you need to complete your studies first. You need to go to university. You need to get your degree in that because that's just like, for them, it's like the basics. You need that. It's like minimum kind of. But as I've been auditioning more for, especially for like bigger things, they, they they know that like if if something comes along that I just can't refuse, then maybe I'll just have to go in that direction. You get me? So but we haven't crossed that bridge yet, so I don't really want to worry about that too much because that's all like theoretical stuff. I'm just like right now all I know is I'm doing the engineering thing, doing the acting thing, and I'm just gonna keep balancing both for as long as I can until one of them kind of gives way. So you said you're doing the acting thing. Um, mm. I don't know if you saw it. Um, there was this thing called damage control. I'm not sure why you would have <laughs> seen it. I don't know. I'm just making a... Just going off a whim here. Um, they had this really, really great lead actor. Like He was he was great. I was like, right, this guy, fam. This guy, he's my favourite actor. Right now. Then I went, hold on a second. I know him. <laughs> so yes, if you don't know... Anthony was the lead in a short film called Damage Control. What was it? It was Channel 4, innit? Or Film 4? 
Channel 4, Channel 4. Sick. Sick. It's still available. You can still watch it now, can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it's actually on YouTube now as well. So it's on um, oh. M- MYM. Yeah. Oh, the link will be in the yeah. description. Best believe. It, it, it will be there. So you better click it. I'm telling you because this film's hard. So for the people that haven't watched it, just describe to them what it's about, your role, um, what was it like filming the audition process. Um, Yeah, go ahead. I'll leave it to you. Yeah, I'll describe it as... um. Oh, how do I describe it? I would say it plays on the perceptions of black youth in the UK. That's what I would say. Um, Because obviously there are various stereotypes when it comes to black people, how we're perceived. And um, the director, Abdu Sise, great guy. Like, I loved working with him. And um, yeah, he wrote this and um, he, he kind of wrote it in a way that something that seems as some sort of like sinister event turns out to be something completely different. And obviously that's how we're seen. We're seen as this thing in society, this sort of stereotype, but really we're just people. And, you know, we're just living like everyone else. I would say that's how I'd describe it. My role, I I don't want to speak about my role too much. Just watch it, I'll say, just watch it. But the process, yeah, the process to, um, to getting it was, it was actually very unique because I had done a short film prior to that and um, yeah, so I'd done a short film prior to that and the producer for that short film, uh, me and him just really got along and he, he really liked me for, for that short film and um, after we'd after we'd wrapped, he pulled me aside and he said, yeah, I definitely want to work with you again. I really enjoyed working with you. I was like, okay, cool. Like, but I didn't really think anything of it. But then like, literally a couple weeks later, he calls me up. <laughs> and he's like, I got another role for you. I was like, rah. So then he gets me on the phone with um, Abdu, the director. And yeah, me and him are just chatting about the role. Like he sent me the storyboard and everything. And yeah, he's like, yeah, we'd love to have you on board. And I was like, okay, cool. So that's really how I got that piece. But yeah, on being on set, it was, it was a day shoot. And yeah, it was, it was probably one of the best days I've had on set in terms of like just enjoying what I do you know just enjoying life being on set being an actor uh it was a great cast I worked with some great people Abdu was great the producer I'm a big fan of him so uh yeah yeah it was just a great experience overall to be honest this next question right I won't lie it's a mad question it's mad that I can't answer the question I'm actually a waste man for even asking people this because I can't answer it what is your best attribute And it's, huh. it's, it's mad. I'm, I'm a waste man. Yeah. I don't really know what my best attribute is either, but I'm just going to like, why not? Why, why not? So let's ask it. Because actors, right, we like to do this thing where, like, you know, we're humble, like, oh, I'm all right, I'm just doing my thing. I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. Very humble. Today, the humble was at the window. Oh, man. You know what? Act- it could be... in terms of acting, as a, right? Or, or as a person? I was going to say, it could be as an actor, as a person. It's up to you. It's completely up to you. Oh, man. You could do both. It's up to you. Some, you can do what you want. This is your interview, bro. I'm just here. I'm just I'm just in the background, just you know. Man. I'll give, okay. I'll give, you, I'll give uh, you your time. I'll give you your time. I'll give you your yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me give me a bit of time. Give me a bit of time. Give me a bit of time. Oh, that's a hard question, you know. Attribute. As an actor. Huh. Maybe like. Oh man, I feel like I'm just being cocky or something, man. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> Oh, man. It's not one thing I realized, right? One thing I realized in the position that we're in right now, where no one really knows too much about us. Like we, say that you go to an audition, you go to mm-hmm. an audition. We know why we should get this part, right? But how are we the cast yeah. to go know if we don't tell them or show them or something? So it's not even be, like it's okay. it's ah, it's not even being cocky. It's just it's just you just like just letting people know in it, just letting them know. Mm, okay yeah, yeah like, your worth. <laughs> it's like exactly know your worth yeah. has i think it has to be yeah like my commitment to the role when i'm in the role like, i would say if if i'm in a scene with you yeah i'll give you my energy i know i'm giving you my I know. energy i know so i like i would say that that is something yeah that maybe sets me apart i know a lot of actors have a lot of like a lot of commitment to their roles but i would say with me it's something like I prize myself on like giving you that and I like if I'm in a role I need to give it 100%. I need to I need you to feel it basically. 
And that, that actually comes from identity training. That comes from one teacher in particular. One teacher, his name is Andrew Elkins. Mm. Andrew Elkins, yeah. If you don't know Big Andrew Elkins, Andrew. get to know because he is he's the best teacher I've like, ever had in life, I'd think. Like, yeah, because he's mad. And he taught me that, I'd say. He taught me about being com- being committed to the role. Like, he always said, like, do they get it? Like, when I'm acting with you, I'm going to try and be as truthful as I can. And I'm going to make you understand what I'm doing. I'm going to make you understand how I'm feeling. You get me? And that's Andrew. That's Andrew trailing. <laughs> Apart from acting and electronic engineering and them things there, what else, what else you want to do? What else do you think you want to do? Directing, writing? Yeah, I definitely want to um, want to do some writing, some directing, because I admire I admire those people the way they can writers when they how they like tell a story and directors how they actually show that on screen and all of these like little things. I love watching like certain movies and TV, mainly movies actually, and just watching how directors direct. I was I was actually speaking to a friend today about Shutter Island. Mm. And that's a Martin Scorsese movie. Mm. And the things he does in that movie, you know, as a director, it amazes me. And I want to be someone that can do that too. The end goal, like, isn't even, like, just acting or just directing or writing or being an engineer or something like that. I would say it's more, like, the the impact I can have in those positions. Because when you, when you, when you get to a certain level in, in any really any career type, you can have some sort of impact on the people around you. And for me, it's always been, I want to be able to kind of like inspire people in a way, because when I watch, when I watch movies, when I watch TV shows, and when I see these great actors, the effect they have on me, that's the effect I want to have on other people. And not just, I don't just admire them for their acting, but what they can do with it. Because I see that as, like, greatness, like, because there are some greats in the world. And that is, like, to be at the top of your game, to, to be that great and to have that sort of effect on on the people around you, that's just something special. I, don't, I want to be someone that can inspire people to, to be better. Because when I watch these actors, they inspire me to be better. I would just want to be better at anything that I'm doing. I could watch Michael Jordan play basketball and then decide, oh, I'm going to bang up revision for for a few hours because that's great. I know what you mean. I, be great. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the kind of like impact that I want to have eventually. That's, that's really the end goal for me. And acting is kind of a means as to get to that point. Oh, well, listen, man, it's been a pleasure, an absolute pleasure. Let the people know like what, what else you got cooking? Cause I know you always have something Ooh, cooking. What are you cooking. cooking? Even if you can say, cause you know how this is. Yeah, I'm not sure if I can say right now because I don't know. Like some details have not been <laughs> exactly finalized, so uh yeah, I don't wanna get in trouble. But there may be something. May not be something. Oh, there's actually no. There is um. <laughs> there is something I can say. There's a film. There's a film coming out this year. Um, I shot uh, last year with, um, what's the film called? It's called The Fantastic Flick Cross. And yeah, it's a biopic um, about this golfer. And uh, Mark Rylance plays the lead in that movie. Mm. And yeah, being on set for that was amazing, man. Just seeing Mark, you know, like a Oscar winner, yeah. His process to like do the acting. Like there'll be times where, like he does this thing where he lies on the ground, right? Like with his knees up, so like semi supine type thing, and uh, he's got his um, like earphones in because I think um, he was doing an accent at the time, so he was probably listening oh, okay. to a re- recording of his acting. But he was just like lying there on the ground, yeah. And I was just watching him, like, damn, that guy is working. Man. <laughs> like he's doing. Ah, oh, I was gassed. I was gassed. <laughs> if you, if yeah, you... that film. That film. If you work with Anthony on any other job, yeah. If you see him lying down in semi supine with earphones, then you know why he's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> where can they find you with your socials if you have them you don't you know yeah you can yeah you can find me on uh instagram anthony j abraham mm. yeah i don't have twitter so yeah instagram find me on instagram say this well, we're gonna keep talking there's gonna be an extended version on spotify so i'll leave the link to that 
down in the description there but as for this we're gonna leave you lot uh yeah thank you anthony again bro honestly it's always a pleasure always always a pleasure uh thank you for tuning in like subscribe do all of that share it with your aunties and your your pet owners and your babysitters and all them things there and uh yeah <laughs> see you later in a bit